All right, welcome. Hello, it's Jenny Wallach with the Wallach Group in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, so here's the deal. I am gonna share this inside of my closed group, Your Journey with Jenny. Thanks for all of you who have been along on this journey with me over the years. And I invited my coach, uh, Jordan Freed, to help out because you know what coaches do. They keep us on track and they make sure to include you coach mega mega amazing agents across the country so you're going to be able to insert maybe things that i'm not doing at the highest level but other agents are and so i thought that would be cool for us to share um tons of you guys hit me up all the time and i so appreciate it and i love that you come to me for questions and um a lot of times I've already shared an answer, so I may just go back to the group and tag you and say, here it is, here it is. And then I get a lot of one-off Facebook messages, text messages, emails that you ask me very specific things. And I thought, okay, hold on. Let's just group all these together and let's just have a whole hour together of talking about database. And we may discover that we need to do this more often. And I love systems. I love database. <laughs> I love GPSs and all kinds of stuff, don't I, Jordan? That is true, that's true. <laughs> so I have all this, it may be unorganized, and so that's what um, you're here for. And so uh, we'll get started here. Jordan, you wanna just introduce yourself real quick and maybe share why you're valid to be my amazing coach. Sure, yeah, so um, my name's Jordan Freed. I'm a MAPS executive coach. Uh, I don't know that I'm valid to coach Jenny. I, I learn as much from her as I think she probably does for me. Uh, and yet yeah, I specialize in coaching rainmakers of large teams and um, have been with MAPS now. This is my fifth year of being a full-time coach. So thanks for having me, Jenny. Well, I, in our short time of being together, I love that what a, a great coach does for you if you don't have one. Um, what one has always done for me is just allows me to look at things a little differently and open my mind up to new ideas, especially when your coach coaches other great teams inside of our company and then, you know, is always going to be utilizing the systems, models, and tools that are already created. So guess what, guys? I'm not going to share anything today that it does not come from this book or has already been done by others. I don't have a magic pill. If that's what you're looking for, go ahead and exit now because that's not what today is about. I'm going to tell you how boring and how unsexy this <laughs> business really is because everything is a system. I love Jordan, you said this when we first started working together and I say it all the time. You, you build out the plan and you run the play. So That's share right. with everyone what that really means to you, especially when it comes to database. Well, I mean, I think, you know, one of my favorite quotes around this, Jenny, I think you hit the nail on the head there, is that a high tolerance for boredom is a decidedly underrated superpower. A high tolerance for boredom is a decidedly underrated superpower. Um, because this database game and the people that win at it it's because the thing that they do different than 99 percent of agents out there is they are consistent with it mm -hmm. and you're absolutely right it is about as fun as watching paint dry uh in a lot of cases and yes the events and the giveaways and all that stuff is really cool and yet all the processes and the work up to that are um they're boring and it's not super fun. Um, the payoff is worth it though, especially when you nail this so well that you can, like what we're doing, teach it to other people. Yeah. Um, and yet I, I believe as far as a plan for a database that people will respond better to a calendar driven system uh, versus a campaign driven system. Uh, I don't find that when agents sit there and work to build out an entire campaign for a year that they ever really execute on that. Um, I find that when we say things like, okay, what will you do with your database on the 10th of this month? What will you do on the 25th? Um, we, we run a play, as you know, called the 10 25 90, and we can get into that a little bit later. But mm -hmm. As far as working the plan for a database, understand that it is boring, it is monotonous. And again, I find it much better to be a calendar driven system than a campaign driven system. Yeah, I love that. 
Well, another thing that has come up and definitely seems to be a hot word and a, and a topic is having a playbook. It sounds really fancy and it's just a marketing plan, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so let me just kind of back up and I'll start with my history of database and how it's grown over the years. So I've been in real estate for 19 years now. And um, my natural behavioral style is one that's going to be more of a relationship versus a, a, a task or a transactional agent. Now, the thing is that you can be a relationship agent and you still need systems and accountability because in the early days, I was a lead receiver. I would show up to an open house and I'd smile and people would eventually work with me. And I didn't do anything or know nothing about being a proactive prospecting, stay in touch purposely agent. Not until I got to Keller Williams in 2012 and 2007 did I learn any of this stuff. So um, part of my story always does start with bold. I don't know if it was bold itself was the magic that I needed at the time or it was just the idea around thinking big and changing my thinking when it came to my database and when it came to business. And so by, by removing these limiting beliefs that I had, that I was bugging people, really just changed everything. I went from 23 units as a single agent in 2010 to the next year doubling to 51 units as a single agent. And a mom of a three and a half year old. So I was really, really a part-time agent. And um, so that can be done. And I know those numbers aren't like mind boggling. They were for me though, at that time, it was a, a huge strain and, and stress on the work life counterbalance, as we say. And so I had to get really, really focused on leverage with systems and tools and people. So that all was good. I continually had growth every year over year, and I was still mostly relationship, not really going out crazy like calling for sale by owners or expires. I just, again, touched, talked to people that were already in my database. And I had a coach, a new coach in 2016, and just by asking a question, like you great coaches do, you get us to think. And that coach asked me just right off the bat, well, how many people are in your MET database? And now we're kind of changing the language around METs and unmets with the whole new command and stuff. But back then, MET comes right from this book. And that is how you define and can decide and see how much business you're going to have in a year. Because if you have your METs defined and tagged properly, you can base your production estimates on that number if over three years, you consistently market to them with then a 33 touch, now 36. Now we know that we're all doing like 55 million touches <laughs> in a year, right? It's like 30, ours actually says 36 plus. <laughs> <laughs> There's just, you know, way more things that are going on. And so by just getting really clear and defined on that number of Mets is when the business started coming more from my database and more consistently from my database. And I'll tell you what I did, that trick. You guys, I had a lot of people ask me, how do you clean up your database? There's this class and it was called Do the Database 2 from uh, Never Ending Referrals. And now this technique is in bold. And because what would happen, and you guys are so guilty of this too, is you get really motivated to go through your database and you start at the A's and you maybe get to the C's or D's and then you get distracted and you get off and then you start over and then you start over and you never get all the way through. And so that's why do the database too is valuable because it doesn't give you like a bias of what letters you're going to start with. Um, yeah, touch on that for a second, Jenny. Yep. Um, so, you know, as a coach, uh, I've had many a conversations about getting the database done and probably the first year and a half that I coach people like try, just working to get people to stop chasing deals and to sit down and do that process is painful. And so one thing that if you have a database that isn't super cleaned up, isn't super organized to Jenny's point, the never ending referrals is great. And yet what you're missing are deadlines. 
and deadlines where other people are expecting you to have something done. So one thing that when I take on a client or somebody whose database isn't cleaned up, the first thing that we do is we set an event. We plan an event, whether it's a movies or the easiest thing here, uh, especially if you're not highly social because they come in, you greet them, and then you send them to the movie. And what that does is now we have a deadline and it gives you a reason to call. It gives you a reason to reach out to all these people and say, hey, I wanted to invite you to something. What's the best number or best email address for me to send this to? If I were going to drop you something in the mail, where would, I, where would I send that, right? So if you're cleaning up this database, that DTD2 is amazing. And yet get an event set from the very beginning so that pushes the deadline. Plus, I also believe that most people are not call reluctant. They're value deficient. And you're not call reluctant, you're value deficient. You're not thinking and engineering reasons that you're excited about to communicate with your database. And when you have an event, I don't know about you, but I think it's so cool when somebody invites me and my family for a free movie, right? I mean, that's really cool. And so then it gives you a reason to reach out and a deadline to get this done by. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's great. If you guys are taking notes, that's amazing. And that's a great way. So, so maybe you've got whatever your system is. I love the event idea because that creates urgency in us. Like we know we got to get this done. So that's a great method. Um, so yeah, so get your database cleaned up. Now when it comes to tags, um, to me, I'm going to share what I have and it works for my brain and because I've had a database for a really long time. So you call your tags what you want to. Um, but basically, I actually made my own little upside down triangle because it, your database is a funnel, right? So up at the top, when people come into our database, we tag them as sphere of influence. And then they have a tag of team SOI. So it's really, there's two tags when anyone first comes into our database. It could be a lead, a referral, it doesn't matter. And the reason that they're tagged sphere of influence is because we want to be able to pull everyone that is a sphere of influence because that's who gets our emails from our viral marketing that sends out two videos a month. Whenever we do a mass email, that is the tag that we pull. And then what happened in the early days is because you start growing a team. And to me, I don't know about you, but it's pretty important for everyone to know whose sphere is whose, especially when you bring people into your database, into your, your team, and we need to be able to add their database of people. And if they don't stay on the team, that we can easily remove those people because that's how we operate. We're not going to keep their mess. That doesn't you know, do any good for us. So that's why it would be in the early days, it was Jenny SOI and let's say Nate and Nate SOI and Brittany SOI. So it was real easy to see who had brought that person to the team. And then I was like, well, this doesn't feel good because Jenny is the leader of the team and I am all about we and us and not I and me. So I changed the name from Jenny SOI to team so that it's very clear if you popped into our database, you could see that it was a team lead or it was an agent lead that came into our world. And then from that funnel, it really just goes right to METS. Have we met them? Have we had a conversation back and forth about real estate? Do we know them? Are they a past client? Are they in some kind of a relationship? These could even be, you know, a, a web lead and we've had back and forth conversation. The whole point of the MET category, especially for us, is that the METs are who we spend money on. So METs should most likely have all types of contact info, their name, their physical address, their email address, and their phone number. And then of course we go into like birthdays and anniversaries and all that fun stuff too. But a MET is who we spend the money on because in the old days everyone was thrown into this big pot of people and I was spending money on an expired I called three years ago like one time <laughs> who had moved. And you know, that's a stamp that I'm just wasting money on. Um, and then from our MET category, then it goes down to our rock stars. So you guys have heard me talk about this. This is just your 
core advocates, your allied resources, your cheerleaders, your raving fans. It's not all past clients. Some people think that all past clients deserve equal love. And I learned a long time ago, just because we had a great transaction together, Jordan, you're not a referring type person. You're nice enough. And maybe, maybe, maybe in 10 years, you'll call me to sell your house, but you're not going to share my name with anyone. That's just not who you are. So I was putting like pressure and stress on my brain when you would never respond to me. So I came up with this rock star group. It's, it's kind of off. Well, it is off of the ideas off of Liz Johnson in Seattle. She, the KW agent, she created a book called Perk Your Sphere, which is really just a system, which is exactly the system that is already in um, the same section of the lead generation model. So as I'm reading Liz's book, if you go to page 141, of MREA, Gary tells us how to set up an allied resource referral generating program. It's already here. Again, it's amazing what you find when you read this book. So it tells us how to run the system. And the system is just the people that are rock stars, they get invited into the rock star group when they share a referral with us. And there's touches that go along with that system in that, you know, an action plan is applied and then these certain things happen. And then by being a rock star, you're also getting all of our emails, all of our postcards in the mail, and you get added to a closed Facebook group just for you. So lots of people ask what's in this closed Facebook group. Well, it's not that exciting. It's definitely not real estate. It is no real estate. It's community events. It's um, giveaways that are coming up for them. The benefit of being a rock star for us is that you get early invitations to some of our fancier events. You get exclusive invitations to just events that are for you. Um, and then um, we just share other fun and gratitude stuff in there, especially with community things. And then another little subset, even as a part of that, would be our preferred service partners. So that's, you know, as I was going and preparing for this, I just noticed a big gap in these people. So our preferred service partners are vendor partners in town who maybe they were in our database and they're clients of ours and they own a small business. So I've gone out and I've shot a video with them to promote their business. And in return, they've said that, you know, they will gladly share re referrals in exchange. So, um, and with those, I also have a, a boss business owner uh, mastermind that again, I need to do more work on. Um, inside of that, the only other tags are things that are just for a little bit more clarity, like um, past client 2019. And the value of adding that at the closing as part of the closing checklist is so that at the end of the year, we can pull all those clients and send out certain things just for them. Another um, two other categories are in-town agents and out-of-town agents because I share you know, videos and marketing just to them. Um, and then we tag, if you shared a referral with us, Jordan, what year that referral closed, because again, at the end of the year, we wanna send you a sweet treat and a thank you. That is how our database is set up and it's not too tricky. It's not, it's very, I think, pretty defined. Um, what would you add with that? Um, so, okay, I, I love that. And uh, I use a similar approach on this, Jenny. So, again, if everyone will draw like a big upside down triangle and a funnel, and then inside of the funnel put four horizontal lines, so you have five sections, right? Uh, I believe that a great tagging system inside of a database is made up of five things. So, inside of the database at the top section, it's source. Where did it come from? So open houses for sale by owners, whatever. Uh, the next one is groups. So that's where Jenny's talking about SOI. It could be vendors. It could be a team member's SOI. But we have groups, specific groups. The next one is intent. So if somebody is looking to buy or sell this year, I believe that we should be tagging those people as a buyer, a seller. It could be both. They may be an investor. But having an intent uh, tag inside of there. The next one is motivation. So if they are a buyer, for example, um, I like the tagging system through the pipeline on the CGI tool. So like, for example, if it's a seller 10, 
that's somebody who's going to list this month. A seller nine is next month. Uh, same thing with buyers. They're going to start the process this month. They're going to start next month. And what I like about that is when I'm coaching someone at the beginning of the month, I can say, hey, tell me about your pipeline. How many people do we have that are going to list this month? And for example, if they need to take 12 listings that month, I know that they need roughly 24 people on the pipeline for that month for all of their listings to come from follow up instead of having to go out there and hunt something down right? Because it's hard to identify, connect with, and generate, like, convert a lead all in the same months. I would rather see somebody getting, you know, 80 to 90% of their business this month from follow-up. So that uh, motivation, and then the bottom part or the bottom section of the funnel is relationship ranking. And that's what Jenny's talking about. That could be A plus, A's, B's, and C's, or it could be rock stars, core advocates, you know, things of that nature. So, the funnel that we use is much like Jenny's. Uh, I think mine's more of a 30,000 foot view. Um, and that is, again, source, group, intent, motivation, relationship ranking. And I think each good tagging system has those, those five parts. I love it. And yeah, ours are in there, all included in there some way too. And we still have room for improvement. And we do use that pipeline report. So some of you guys watching, this would always happen to me. My coach would say, what's in your pipeline? I go, uh, well, you know, in my database, I'll get a reminder that will tell me. And it's so it was like it was there, but it wasn't here. And so that's where now, like you said, we do use the spreadsheet of the pipeline report as a team and the agents do update that. And that is what I share with you so you can see what's in our pipeline. <laughs> that's right. See, a, a solid pipeline creates nine to five predictability with unlimited income opportunity. So we, we can count like clockwork how many you're gonna close each month off of your pipeline. It's, you know, the, the analogy I use is that, would you rather every day have to get up and go hunt something, kill it, drag it home and cook it? Or would you rather have like chickens and a farm or like a garden? Like, what would you rather have? A pipeline is a farm, it's a garden, it's something that you can count on. Uh, outside of that, you got to go hunt things down and that's okay. Just know it takes a lot of energy and time. It's way too hard. Yeah. Uh, so the pipeline really is the key to this. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. It, it takes so much work and it is crazy. And I know that we get lots of leads and I am just a, a follow-up, a for, you know, fortune is in the follow-up gal. I mean, yeah. You, you ask, as, as the coach saying, is it a leads issue or is it a conversion issue? I don't know that it's ever really a leads. It's, a, it's already in there and it exists and we're not doing a good enough job of, of squeezing love out of them, especially in your coach of, of teams who implement, like we do, the promise. Yeah. If, if, you, if you guys haven't learned of the promise, I know that you'll find lots of info on it. And um, if you're delivering an amazing client experience to your people, you should be able to generate referrals from them. Those are already like right here, like ready to give you back love. I mean, it's so fun for me now because I'm calling after closing every client and saying to them using the gratitude script from Bold pretty much, Thank you for being an amazing client. We sure loved working with you. And I uh, just got to know, how do we do on a scale of one to 10? Did we deliver on our promise? No, you did great. You know, what would, and then I, you know, it was a nine. Well, what would make it a 10? Well, nothing. I just don't give tens, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And then getting permission to share a link to get reviews. And so, I think, I think, I think so many people overcomplicate this and that's what goes on here. And that's why everyone thinks they need to hear and hop on the latest webinar to hear what, what it is that we're doing. Uh, when it comes to frequency and the touch system, we just build out at the beginning of the year, what are we going to do? And I'll tell you the honest truth and Jordan's right. Nowadays it's about events and they don't have to be big and expensive. They don't have to be tricky or crazy. And as I've been sharing our events and our, our, our history with them, because we just started a few years ago implementing events, and I think a lot of agents have fear around it. 
fear of what if nobody shows up and then fear of what if too many people show up and I have an answer for that we just started small the first time that we did an event it was a very small pie day and we just invited people who closed that year then we the next year we did it and we just invited um, rock stars so we got to just baby step it and then with every event we utilize eventbrite so they must rsvp it's not call into the office and then do this and then do that or if they do have a call in it gets tracked all in eventbrite so it's one in one spot and we just cap that number so the first year we knew that we had a budget for 40 pies that's how many that we get so it's first come first serve right like you hey you guys just sign up and then you we always will have a confirmation call don't forget got to come pick up your pie so for me that's what really has been helpful is just have an event an event like you said and then having a, so many touches around each event. So I'll just share the, the five of ours that we have on our calendar for this year to give you guys ideas. And you will hear that they're not tricky or fancy. Um, so we are having on uh, February, uh, in February, we're having a date night right before Valentine's Day. It's the same exact play that we've already run when it comes to um, a pie day, really. You come and pick up the pizza, you RSVP, and then you take it back to the family. So what are we getting? We're getting an hour and a half of people coming to us and getting face-to-face -face time, hugs and high fives, and then sending them on their way. It's the most fun ever. You get your face hurts from smiling and laughing because you're seeing all your people. You get vendor partners to help you out. So that offsets your costs. Um, and then of course you guys hear me say this all the time is every event that we do, we partner it with a nonprofit. So we're gonna have some kind of way that the clients can donate or give. I think people really like being able to give back related to an event. Um, and then Jordan, with your recommendation and idea, now every one of our events has a reverse bold 100 a week before. So if you guys haven't heard what this is about, why don't you share what it is? I'll take a drink of water. What's a reverse bold 100? Yeah, so the idea, this actually, this idea originated with Craig Goodliffe, who is a uh, MAPS coach and the owner of a company called Cyberbacker. Uh, and uh, the idea is to get 100 people to call you one day instead of you calling 100 people or talking to 100 people. So the way that it works is you choose some sort of a giveaway. Um, so recently, uh, in like our market where I am, I live just outside of Kansas city. Uh, the Titans were playing the chiefs at Arrowhead stadium. And, uh, we had a group of agents here in our office who went in together, bought two tickets to that game and they advertised it through, uh, text messaging, email, social media, and let all of their databases know that they just needed to call in on Friday between 9 and 4 p.m. to register their chance to win. And um, the I think that between the three of them, they had 330 calls, and the last time I heard the referrals was hanging around right around like 60, 61 referrals in that time. And not all those referrals will pan out. Usually about 50% of them are actually good. And um, yet it's a really fun, easy way to, I like the words, perk your sphere and create some energy. I especially think now it's a great time to do it because, you know, the spring market has, if, if you're looking to move in March, you're probably already looking online. And if you have a home to sell, uh, right now is such a great time uh, to have one because you can start those conversations with those people. Yeah. And Jenny, I have a document that I've shared with you. Maybe I could just post it yeah. in uh, your journey with Jenny and then everyone can see that because, I mean, it's nothing fancy. It just has all the examples and some marketing and things that other clients have done. And uh, that could give everybody kind of an idea. And then obviously we have to preface this with talk with your broker. If you live in a state like 
Oklahoma was this way for a long time, uh, that you can't do these things. You just need to do your due diligence before you go out doing this. Um, and yet it's fun. And uh, we really uh, have seen some great, great results come out of it. Yeah, so we um, first launched ours just a week or so after we could finally legally do this in Oklahoma, and and we found that it was pretty crazy because we didn't have a lot of, of marketing time in advance, and in that very short, short period of time, we got uh, in that marketing lead time with sending emails to our database and reminders, we got 26 call-ins and like eight or nine referrals and the giveaway wasn't that valuable. So it's like, it was really an aha that you need more time to prepare. What do you think, like a couple weeks? Of um, I, I usually uh, encourage people to start the marketing 10 days out from the date that they're calling in. So like, I think uh, one of the ideas that's getting tossed around right now is uh, date night for Valentine's Day. So we get roses and a limo and chocolates and dinner and all that. And then people can call in. And um, if the call in is going to be, let's just say, on the 7th, then we want to start that around the 26th or the you know, 27th of January. And um, mass texting, slide broadcasting, voicemails, things like that are the things that we can start. Another one that I really loved that one of my clients did was they started a Facebook event around it. Mm -hmm. So they created a Facebook event, shared that with everybody. Um, and there's just been so many great little ideas. The other thing that this really does too, Jenny, is that, you know, if you have 150 people call in and we're looking at your Met database going, geez, I've got four or five hundred, a thousand people, it gives us the opportunity to reach out to the people who didn't participate and say, hey, we did this giveaway and I wanted to make sure that you know that it was even available. Did you know about it? Yeah. And so that can start another conversation you know, about real estate or whatever. It's just a reason to reach out. Yeah, I love it. So that is just a, a, a brilliant idea. Have some kind of fun, come pick up something at your office. It can be super on the cheap. Um, have a reverse bold 100 with some kind of awesome giveaway. Partner with a vendor and have them pitch in. You know, like you don't have to be on the hook for all the expense of this. They want to work with you. And the gift, Jenny, is the most important thing. Make sure that you pick a gift that matches your market. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Wichita, Kansas, where I'm originally from, and you're giving away, you know, Thunder tickets that are the hockey team there that people can grab at the local gas station for free, that's not going to get them to call in, yeah. right? And yet, like, what we're doing one in Wichita where George Strait is coming to town and uh -huh. giving away two tickets to George Strait, that will get blown up because country music is a huge thing in that city, yeah, right? So sure. make sure you pick a gift that matches your market. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, the gift, have, gift has to match your market in your database, and can we burn this out? Can our database, could we do it so many times that they're like, this is dumb, I don't wanna play? Absolutely, so here's the thing. Like I had mentioned earlier, you know, the 10th of every month, uh, being some like a date that we're going to do something with the database. I recommend that if we have 12 months in a year that we do four reverse bold 100s, mm -hmm. one per quarter. Yep. And then what I like to see is um, uh, the, every other month we do a contest and the contest could be, hey, we're doing a March Madness challenge. Send your bracket in or here's the link to fill it in. The winner will win X, Y, and Z or guess the price of this listing, some form of a contest, and we do four of those over the course of a year. And then I like um, every quarter doing a pop buy. And yet with pop buys, I love your idea, Jenny. I like reverse pop buys and then outbound pop buys. So twice a year you do a reverse pop buy. That's pizza night, come pick up your pizza. That's the pies, come pick up your pie. So they're coming to you and then twice a year, we're going to them. Okay. I like that. Now I've got a lot of notes of things we got to implement now. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So that's the point. That's the 10th of every month, right? But then also the 25th of every month, I believe, to your point earlier, Jenny, we should be spotlighting one local business. Yeah. And then I think that that business should donate something yep. 
that we can give away. Now, I'm not talking about coupons. Coupons are lame. Uh, I remember an agent in Wichita did this. Keely Hiller did this. And uh, she partnered with a furniture company. She spotlighted the furniture company. It was like this beautiful custom furniture. And then she gave away a coffee table from there. Mm. And so it created, and the way that she did it is she said, okay, if you want the coffee table, you've got to like my page. You've got to like this business's page. And then you have to share the post. Yeah. See, right? now we can do these things. That's what's crazy is our brains here in Oklahoma, at least maybe some other states haven't had this opportunity. We have to retrain ourselves of how to do this kind of marketing. <laughs> so I'm excited. Right. I love that. I love the reverse um, pop by. Um, you know, so I'll just share. People are always asking what, is, what to say to your database. So you may know that I utilize vi video in our business. And so I do use a company called Viral Marketing. I've been with them for five or six years now. I've really seen a growth in my business. You can't really track that video has provided you more business. I can track though that more and more of our business comes from our sphere because they see us as professionals and because we share our successes in a nice way of doing it. And we also really, really, really give back to the community through our business and through our efforts. So for me, you if you were a member of our database locally here, you'd get two videos a month from us. And these videos are gonna alternate between a local business spotlight, a local nonprofit that we're sharing information about. We, um, the most fun ever is going to a local restaurant and um, spotlighting restaurants. And then lastly, I will do a market update or a, or something to do with our team because we do still need to remind them that we're in real estate and the thing is is that the reason i share those topics and not just market reports over and over again is because i when i work with viral they re, they send a report right after so i can see how many people click on each video and what is more popular and it's never the real estate content. The things that people want to see here locally are, are fun things, I found at least. What do you think about that? Um, you, you know what's so funny about you saying that, Jenny, is I was on a call yesterday. I coach a great team in um, North Carolina, and I was talking to their, um, she is the head of their social media, and we were talking about video and what gets engagement. And we said, she said, you know, what gets engagement right now is luxury listings, like beautiful mm -hmm. listings, right? Wow. And they live right on the water. Um, Moorhead City is where they live. And so, but she said the rest of like the real estate content where they're talking about, here's the best three things or the top three stats you need to know, that just doesn't go anywhere. And so it's so funny uh, you said that. See, I learned just as much from you as you do from me. Um, I said, well, what if you changed your message? What if it became about, you know, fun things or it became about inspirational things? Like they have a local college there. And uh, one of the ideas that I had was, what if you had a contest where you were gonna pay for books for all four years for a college student and they could send you a video of why they should be selected. And then we could take all those videos and put them together and then share that as a community video right like we real estate does not pull on the heartstrings of people enough anymore hgtv vacuumed that all out and it's not real anyway um and so i think that you're absolutely right and one of the ideas that you know it's it's becoming more of a lifestyle brand and looking at it through the lens of how can we inspire people how can we be leaders in our communities and uh, I think that that's a message that we're starting to tailor on that team and something that uh, people should be really starting to adopt. Gary V, in my, point, in my opinion, is the guy that you should all be watching about this because he doesn't get on there and talk about the impact of digital marketing on your bottom line. Like, that's not what it is. It's him out there just dumping his knowledge on the world, and that's what attracts everybody to it. Yeah. Right? So I, you are dead on with that, Jenny. The real estate content, mm -hmm. I get asked that all the time. What's the perfect thing? There isn't one. It's just not that interesting. 
It's really not. It's really not. And thanks for reminding me. I'll give a shout out. I'm on the board of directors for KWKC, which is Keller Williams Kids Can, which offers a great class called QL, Quantum Leap for Young Adults. So this is a way you can fold in your giving spirit and attract young adults while still giving back to your database. So if you become a QL for young instructor, QL for young adults instructor, you hold classes of teaching QL, Quantum Leap. It's all the stuff that we use in our six personal perspectives and the one thing, it's all the tools that we wish we had 20, 30 years ago. And it's getting it out in front of our young adults. So if you have any kind of teaching passion in your heart, become a QL instructor, kwkc.org, become, get involved. And it's $2.99, I think, to watch some webinars. And then you have the ability to teach in your market center. That's where it's the cheapest. Or you can go to a local you know, university, whatever. And you get your community involved. Now, what I did is I have a nonprofit called Keys to the City. So when students attend our class, then they can apply for a scholarship and we give $500 scholarships. And it's very easy to, to you know, get this money. And then um, we ask that the students share a video testimonial and a written testimonial so we can post and share that as well. And a lot of the recipients are from our database. They're the kids of our clients. And how do your clients know that you love them? Because you pour into their children and you care about their future. Love that. I'm Love about that. to cry. <laughs> well, I'll take over there because that's what usually happens when we're on the phone together, right? Uh, and so to Jenny's point, you know, I think that Quantum Leap is amazing and everyone should become, uh, uh, you know, certified as an instructor. And the other thing is, is that agents mostly, there is something you're passionate about that you could be teaching to your database, right? And so I, I think everyone should find one thing that you can teach to people. It, it may be financial peace through Dave Ramsey. Maybe you work on the investment side, like the millionaire real estate investor. I think one of the biggest missed opportunities we have as agents is hold. Yep. One of the biggest opportunities we have as agents is if your database has young children, you owe it to them to call them up and say, hey, what if there was a way you could pay for your entire kid's college. Ah. You don't have to come out $1 from your pocket. And all we have to do is go find a home that we can purchase at 80% loan to value. You put it on a 15 year note, even if it doesn't cash flow, even if it breaks even, if that kid is three years old, what do you have by the time they're 18? You've got a paid off house. You could do that twice per kid. And now somebody else paid your kids college or whatever. And if your kid's a jerk, you don't have to give it to them. You can keep it yourself, right? And what I love about that is a college fund, if you put money in a college fund and don't use it for college, you get penalized. Uh, and with this, you can use that money for anything, right? Wow. So just something to consider. Well, that's great. And if you go on KW Connect, guess what already exists? If you search for MREI, Millionaire Real Estate Investor, there is material on how to hold a MREI slash hold workshop. You could set up a day on a Saturday where you um, invite your database to come learn about how to invest in real estate and the content's already created for you. You guys don't have to go reinvent the wheel there. I love that. Um, hey, if you guys also want to go on Eventbrite um, and search for my name, I think you can see all the events that I already have um, when it comes to training and teaching. So those are the kind of events that I share with our local agent database and also business owner database. So that um, things like um, six personal perspectives, that's just not only real estate related, is it? I mean, that's life. That's uh, success principles. So are there classes that you love that you could be offering because you love it anyway? Okay, enough on the teaching thing. Um, I kind of love that stuff. Um, 
something I want to talk about that someone shared was they have um, some a mindset that what they're sending out isn't high enough quality or good enough. So to me, it kind of felt like um, she probably is overthinking her touches and therefore not doing them. What do you think about that? Uh, how would you know? Good question. There you go. Um, how, yeah, I, there's a coaching model I would use on this. I'll just you know share the playbook. Yeah. The first one is, uh, is that true, right? And so they would say yes or no. Okay, is it 100% true? Meaning you have all the, all the facts to support that as a true statement. And the answer to that is going to be no. What's the opposite of that, right? Um, so I believe that if you're la if you're lower in funds or you're just starting out and bootstrapping, enthusiasm sells. Ah. You yep. got to make up for what you, the thing about time and money is that if you have a lot of money, you don't usually have a lot of time. And if you don't have a lot of money, usually you have a lot of time. So you, you may have to hustle a little bit more. Maybe your enthusiasm is the thing. You know, when I was a new agent, people would say, why should I hire you? Say, because if, you, if I don't sell your home, I don't eat. That guy that owns that big team, you think he's going to lose sleep if your house doesn't sell? Plus, you're going to get me, right? Like, you call, you get me, not somebody else. So um, Now we stop that conversation when you have a team. To <laughs> that's, right. that's right. You don't want the Walmart of service, do you, Mr. Seller? Um, and yet... I think that you might be a little in your head on that. Uh, you're not going to know that until you start sending things out. And the thing also is that I think it's important to get out of your head and into your heart as it relates to your community mm -hmm. and that you do it from a vulnerable place that you're there to be uh, of service. You've got to focus on what you can give, not what you can't. And I have a real clear rule when working with people that you never hurt the people you can help by focusing on the ones you can't. Dang, Jordan, that's good. That would definitely make me cry at a normal time, but I got to keep moving, so thanks. Yeah, we're, we got to talk later today. You can let all that out. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. what I wanted to add to that is my early days of, of using video, I, um, I think I was at some event, and, and I know Frank and Jeff Quentin were up on stage, and Jeff wasn't even with Keller Williams back then. And he was sharing how easy it was to shoot a video and then send it to his database or whatever. And I thought, I'm going to do that. And it took me like two years before I really did it because I was trying to do it myself. I was trying to do, be the, the videographer, the editor. If you go back to my YouTube channel, The Wallet Group, I'm just going to fess up and let you guys go see how terrible I was terrible. I would read scripts. I, I mean, and here's the thing I always share is that get over yourself because that's how you really look and that's how you really sound. And you have people, a lot of people that already love you for who you are and they do not care. And I'll tell you the other thing is when you mess up and you're real and you're transparent and you're vulnerable and you have bloopers, that's what they want to see because they want to know that you are not perfect and you mess up because that means you're real. And that's what translates. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't worry about what I call keyboard quarterbacks. I don't, I don't care what people, <laughs> um, if you're, you know, out there tearing, here's the thing. You never look good trying to make someone else look bad. Yeah. You never look good trying to make someone else look bad. And if you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. You need to go out and get yourself some haters. Um, I know, but it hurts our hearts. It Jordan. totally does. I totally get that. And um, yeah, I think you, uh, we've, we've nailed this. And yet um, we, we've got to focus on who we can help. And you're right, Jenny. People want to see real. Yeah. They want to see the real, the bloopers, all those things. And uh, yeah. So I, I think, you know, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, some of the videos you shot within your car right? Yeah. Like when you have that and you're feeling inspired, you can just pop that video up there. And people love those videos. In fact, there's a, an agent that I know, he has a whole series called Cruising with Kirk. And what he does is he drives around with people 
from his community and they just have a conversation and record the whole thing and he's built this little following on YouTube mm -hmm. and people love it. And that's so easy and so inexpensive, you know? It is, you know what it costs? It's $9.99 on amazon.com. It is a um, window mount for your selfie stick. And um, then, and it has perfect lighting in your car, which is super important. And um, I love it. So that is a great way. And I all, you see lots of my videos in my car. It's because I make myself do them before I go into the office in the morning while I have the highest amount of energy and I, and I can knock it out because when the day gets going, what do I end up not wanting to do? Smile and right. be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's even the business spotlights, when you're spotlighting a business, if you don't have the money to create that content yourself or hire a videographer, mm -hmm. take that business owner, put them in the front seat of your car and drive them around with them. Tell me the story about your coffee shop. Why did you start it? What do you feel like it does to the community, right? Just I ask the same three questions over and over again. Tell me a little bit about you and how you got into this business. Are there any new trends or you know things happening either with your business or your industry? And then how can everyone reach out to you to come and connect? It's, that's right. That's my script over and over again. I don't have to think about it any every other time. Well, real quick before we get off, some people ask some questions and I want to answer them. Hi, Jessica. Um, I will I will um, post this live recording. Sorry, I didn't go live on Facebook. I'll post it in. Uh, your journey with Jenny. I will probably also share it on Real Estate in the Real World, which is a public Facebook page. And then I'll even put it on KW Connect so you guys can watch it there as well. And of course, on my YouTube channel. Um, and then Anne asked about the other events. So yes, we do the date night. We do a baseball game because here locally, we do not have a pro baseball team. So the tickets are affordable and that's a huge hit and tons of fun. We usually have a couple hundred people show up for that. Um, and then we're gonna do another movie event this year. That was last year, we did it for the first time. It was great. And then we have our Pi Day, which is this very simple um, system to run and always a great success. And then lastly, at the end of the year, we're, we implemented that this, this past year was a Santa event. So we had stories with Santa. And that one was really for our, our close knit uh, friends and family and rock stars. So those are the events and you just create them and make them better and better every year and then you have systems around them. So then it becomes just, just again, run the play, run the play. Can I share my favorite event with you, Jenny? Yes. So this isn't somebody I coach. His name is Alan, uh, Alan Strange. He lives just uh, between Fort Collins and Denver in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And every year he buys up a whole bunch of Girl Scout cookies and he buys them from multiple people. And then he does, he rents out this brewery and he does a Girl Scout, Girl Scout cookie uh, tasting with a beer, like a, it's like, they call it a pairing. That's what it is. Girl I'm Scout cookies that. and beer pairing. <laughs> and I, I've talked to him about this. He's like, every year it builds on itself. To your point earlier, Jenny, I think, I don't remember what he said, but the first year he said very few people came, but he kept with it. And now it's grown into this big success. And I just think that is so cool, so funny. Well, I love that. And I even if, and I just saw um, Jennifer on our team, she posted that her daughter's going to have Girl Scout cookies. And I was like, okay, so this has to be something. What a great way to give back, donating and encouraging these young entrepreneurs of Girl Scouts to come sell me on their product and then buying them and then, you know, donating them back somehow so we can brainstorm this on our two o'clock call. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There's also a great system called uh, Touch Note that a lot of my clients use. If you aren't familiar with that, if you are listening to your clients, I like listening better than stalking on Facebook. Um, for example, we had this happen a few weeks ago where one of the clients, uh, there was a picture of one of her past clients and his daughter on Facebook. It was just a beautiful picture at a wedding. And so she grabbed it off Facebook, put it in the touch note, had that picture mailed to them with a little note saying, this was just such a good picture. You had to have it in print. And mm -hmm. it was just such a huge thing for that client to, to have gotten that. Um, there you go. I got two of these in the mail after I ran my marathon. How do you think I'm going to throw away a picture of myself? <laughs> <laughs> Running a marathon 
And I mean, it's from Marty Miller was so kind and Stephanie Ward Wardwell. I mean, how sweet is that, that they saw that was a pretty big moment in my life and shared that with me, huh? And see, if you, if you will Google the difference between a Facebook group and a Facebook list uh -huh. and put your database in a list, uh, then that makes it super easy for you to be able to listen to them, watch what they're doing, comment, tag, engage, whatever. And anytime you see one of those pictures, I think touch note is like 250 or something to do that. And it comes in this nice little cardstock thing. Yeah. You know, what are you doing to create feel it moments for your people? I, I love that. This was a send out card. And then I know AM cards that's, you know, in uh, bold is also a great one. So find whatever works best. It's super affordable and it means so much. Yep, we call it. those, we call those hugs on our team. Jordan. So that's actually a system. When someone sees a life event happening with a database client, person, friend, we snap a picture and send it to our administrative team with the subject line hugs. And then that way cards go out for, you know, the good and the not so good events for people. It's lots of fun. Wow. We've uh, talked a lot. Yeah. And we're going to talk again today. I know. After I talk with my other friends for a hold book club. So if you guys want to keep watching, um, well, I'm going to hop on. We're going to chat on hold. And I appreciate you, Jordan. And I'm so sorry, guys, that um, it didn't work out live. And I will still post this everywhere. And please share it and let me know what you think. Thanks, Jenny. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.